So good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about something that I love, which is storytelling. And we heard a lot about stories and the relationship between stories and, and platforms. But often what we do uh, for clients is uh, try to figure out the best way to tell um, a story that connects um, you know, consumers and brands. The challenge, um, and I think the opportunity, is I think that although we know so much about storytelling, and I'll go into sort of the craft of storytelling, um, it has evolved, and it needs to be taken to a different level. Uh, this building has a story. It has a really great story, actually. Um, every single one of you has a story, and evidenced by Facebook and other platforms, you know, we're eager to sort of share that story. And I think what we need to do as marketers is figure out how to make our brands, our products, or services part of your story. Um, as opposed to just trying to bring you into our story. So I'm going to talk to you about this concept uh, that we call storyscaping. i got to find my clicker around here somewhere. There we go. Um, so start with Webster and the definition of storytelling, right? So it's sharing of events with words, images, sounds, and or experiences, sometimes with improvisation or embellishment. Um, I'm going to really delve into the experience bit. Uh, because we really think about stories in sort of one-dimensional or two-dimensional ways. So let's start with this, Love Actually and Top Gun. What's really interesting about that is, um, although they may make very different emotional connections with each one of you, it's actually the same story, because stories are structured. There's characters, there's plots, there's narrative point of view. In fact, there's many, many people, a lot smarter than me, that have studied you know, creating stories. In fact, we have seven basic plots, whether it's comedy, strategy, overcoming the monster. Now think about these things in an evolved canvas. right? So is the voyage and return or a quest better served as a game or as a story? Um, emotional desires, so, so the need to belong or the need to be useful. Stories are hardwired um, into our brains. We make sense of the world. And I think there's a really great slide that talks about you know, information going up and, and the capacity of our brain being finite. We use stories to make sense of the world. Um, in fact, we sometimes see patterns that aren't even there. Um, so being able to leverage those stories and story systems and telling the kinds of stories that we need to to drive behavior. So at the end of the day, there's a lot that's been learned about storytelling. And, and, and typically in these types of conferences, it's all about the world has changed. You know, throw out your toolkit, everything that you know about building a brand, everything you know about connecting you know, with, with, with someone has changed. Well, it hasn't really changed. It's really evolved. And we as marketers leverage stories to drive behavior. Our job is to be able to get somebody to buy a product or service that they weren't thinking about buying, to feel really good about it, and then tell somebody else to do it. So there's both art and science. So the more you know about telling stories, the better off you are. But you know, sometimes, in fact, we ride on the back of stories. So everyone's seen this um, really great spot. This wouldn't work if the pattern of Star Wars didn't sit in everyone's brain. Um, sometimes right to the top in a digital space. Right? And other times, brands are the creators of stories. And we really like that. We really like to be um, more involved in doing that sort of thing. So everything that's been learned about crafting stories, the art of storytelling, you know, how to tug away at the heartstrings, incredibly relevant. Don't forget that. But that's sort of storytelling 101. Um, today, in fact, that traditional sort of storytelling is often more story yelling, just because they're so crowded you know, of a space that we're trying to break through. Today, we can take engagement through to interaction. You know, you remember your first kiss much more than you remember, because you were there, you experienced it. You know, much more than you remember, you know, the first book that you read in school, right? So it's really about um, senses. Um, I spent a time working in, in retail merchandising, which I thought, you know, someone that kind of comes from advertising, so it was interesting. And there was, a, there was a story that I learned, which is, if you walk into a store um, in a mall, regardless of what country it is, whether you understand, read the language or not, in about four seconds, you know, you can find out, is this, story, is this store or this brand for me? 
Is it for my mom? Is it high end? Is it low end? Do these people care about their consumers, their customers not? Um, you could figure all this out because we all have spidey sense. It's not just about words and pictures. It's much broader than that. And you really have to recognize that those experiences, those senses that we have, you learn much more from than just the stories that you hear. So you learn much more from experiences um, than you do um, from being told a story, more be experiencing a story. So remember mom said if you touch the, the, the hot stove, you learn a hell of a lot quicker than if somebody tells you not to touch it. Um, so we're still learning every day on how to communicate, how to bring people into stories, how to become part of people's stories. And just in the last decade, we've learned a lot around things like game design and gamification. So if you're in a consumer package, a good company, or something where you want to make your product or service part of someone's habits, um, understanding a little bit about you know, influencing, game, you know, influencing behavior through game design could be quite useful. And you know something? As there's been all of this learning around storytelling in the last thousand years, there's been a lot of stuff recently. So whether it's how to structure incentives, you know, short-term and long-term goals, how to learn something easy and, and become increasingly complex. Um, you know, I talk to my folks a lot about, let's not just create ads, let's create worlds. Um, and it really is much more than just communications. It's all of those other senses. And you want to be able to bring people into those worlds as well as become part of their worlds. So you learn things around design of experiences or design of space. So whether it's fit or control, these are other dimensions that we use, like emotional levers. Um, we have this expanded canvas, right? The relationship that consumers have with products and services um, has not changed in the emotional level, but it definitely has in the experience space. We call that the experience space. And, and it is those three-dimensional stories, right? It's not just words. It's not just images. But it's everything, right? Um, so we believe that those who tell and live the best stories win. So that's across the emotional space, physical space, and virtual space. So we call this storyscaping. And it's about taking things that always matter. It's about tugging at the heartstrings, but expanding them, you know, creating differentiated experiences that you cannot forget. And that's everywhere. That's not on our terms, but rather in their, in their space. So the old snapshot of messaging, right? So you would transport someone into an environment, um, and you'd paint a picture with what you had as your tools, right? That's sort of playing with the eight crayon box. Now we play with that 24 or the 36 crayon box. It's really thinking about um, you know, these systems. So for example, this is one of our clients at Vail. The experience of being on the mountain, which is inherently social, um, is completely different. Um, than what it used to be, but at the same time, it's very much the same. So this requires sort of an evolution of, of creativity. You need to apply much more systems thinking um, than just um, the big idea. And you need to have kind of the storytellers, architects, everyone in the same room sort of working together. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about storyscaping and kind of the, the you know, four rules. One is defining and understanding the experience space. The second is finding yourself an organizing idea, not just a big idea. Um, and, and, and you'll see that you'll, you'll actually like that, that uh, uh, this, uh, this dando la vida is a perfectly organizing idea as opposed to what we call a big idea. Um, and developing storyscapes, not just storylines, which are these, these worlds and figuring out how to, how to weave them, um, and applying systems thinking to this. So understanding the experience space. And the experience space is anything between a consumer and your brand. Um, and it is a much bigger uh, deal. It's not just what everyone's really thinking about. It's not just about what's new. It's the kitchen sink. Because at the end of the day, you have a communications plan. You don't have a digital plan and another strategy. You, know, you don't have you know, a digital strategy and then everything else. It's all one thing. Consumers don't recognize the difference between offline and online. In fact, 
there's blurrings around the line when you talk uh, virtual and real. Uh, the files on my laptop, to me, are as real as those manila envelopes in my dad's briefcase. I don't tell a damn difference, um, and nor do consumers. So, so really thinking about digital as something that you add on, something that happens on the second floor, um, it's, it's just way past us. You know, the CMO's new canvas is every single one of these experiences, whether it's service, support, the, the product. We get involved in many, many more things that are just than communications. It's much broader than that. So to make sense of this whole big mess, you need that organizing idea, right? Um, let me explain the, the ne necessity for that organizing idea. Stories, especially the stories that consumers um, create for themselves, um, where you may or may not be a part of, um, are not linear. You can't, you, you can't script this thing. You can't think that someone is going to see a 30-second spot, and then it's going to go on your website and learn a little bit more about this. They're going to go ask a friend and then go into the store, and it just doesn't happen that way. So you really need to have story systems um, that are not linear. I, I use the Bible as a really great example, right? Very few people read from page 1 to page 1,200, right? But there is an organizing idea to the Bible, which is a story of the beginning, middle, and end. And it's all very relevant to, to who you are. But you can drop in at any page, you know, in any chapter, and there's a plot, there's a character, there's a story. And it may tell you something, but it serves the bigger story. And that's the way that you have to structure your brand communications, right? So that you know, each one of these things, whether it's 140 characters, or it's a full-fledged film, you know, has to be able to deliver on that organizing idea. And that organizing idea, once you find one, you know, I think the Nestle one's a, a perfect one, makes life easier. Because then you could look at each one of these things. What should we do in Facebook? Should we care about Pinterest? What should we do in the store? What do we do in the product? All of these things become a lot easier to deal with if you have that organizing idea, because it does just that. It's very obvious what you do with each one of these things. The challenge that most marketers have at that point is, well, I only have so many people. I only have so many dollars. There's only so much time in a day. What do we focus on? And that's when you look at that understanding that experience base. You find yourself an organizing idea. You then figure out what that experience, that storyscape looks like. And then you can apply, you know, apply connections planning. That's when you need a spreadsheet. You don't start with a spreadsheet, but it's a really great tool. Um, and then you get to that point where now you understand this is what we need to do. You now have a plan. Um, storyscapes are really, at the end of the day, really great stories that don't have necessarily a beginning, middle, and end, but they're story systems, like, like the Bible. So let's take Harry Potter. Everybody you know, has heard of Harry Potter. They understand um, what it's about, um, whether it's a book, a movie, a game, a theme park or 140 characters, because there's an organizing idea, you deliver on that story. Um, I challenge my teams to do this all the time, challenge clients to do that all the time, to be able to find that one idea that, that can really drive you know, complete different levels of experience. And today, given all the tools that we have, the 24 crayons in the box, we can go a hell of a lot deeper um, in terms of connecting someone or becoming part of someone's story, because it's an experience that they had um, that you couldn't do before. Um, so the single biggest rule that I use for my folks, and, and, and especially if you have a big brand that is heavily dependent on traditional media, at the end of a 30-second spot, you always have a comma, never use a period. Because everything that you do should tell a story, should have a beginning, middle, and end, should have a plot, should have a character, should deliver on that big idea, but it should take you to the next place. Um, so this is sort of the concept of a, of a storyscape. You have an organizing idea, you have a storyscape, you add connections planning, um, and then you really, really understand you know, how to connect and become part of someone's story. So thank you.